hey folks, everything new under the sun. Well, we know a one world government is coming. We know a one, uh, an antichrist figure is coming uh, that will rule the world, one world leader. We know a mark of the beast system is coming. So as we look at the world, uh, do we see evidence that the uh, world is going and moving towards the removal of borders? And of course, we speculated in the past. How does this happen? A major world war? I think an economic collapse would be one good way to do it. If the whole world had a complete and total economic collapse, we were all starving. And then the leaders of the world got together and said, look, let's remove all our borders. Let's come up with a one world government and we will feed everybody uh, via this one world government. Maybe that would be one way that uh, governments would <clears throat> and, and the citizens, because they're starving, would consider um, getting rid of their sovereignty, getting rid of their borders. Um, but here is another way to do it. The United Nations could just implement some uh, policies that move towards this and the, the, the liberal governments of the world would just then kind of agree with it because it doesn't look too harmful. It doesn't look like we're getting rid of all of our sovereignty and the regular voter won't necessarily have a chance to vote on this apart from uh, voting in or out the current government, but not specifically on this. It's not as if countries are going to have referendums on this stuff. So this one is from... <clears throat> this is from jewsnews.co.il. United Nations boss unveils new global mass migration policy. No more borders. United Nations Secretary Ant Antonio uh, Guterres has announced new plans for global mass migration in which countries will need to welcome foreign migrants. The UN's new policy is designed to teach people, uh, educate us, re-educate us, if you will, how migration can benefit the world. By allowing immigrants to take jobs local workers cannot fill, Guterres unveiled the plans during an article he penned uh, for the Guardian newspaper. He declared the need to reinforce benefits of migration and that the new legislation should be seen as an opportunity to loosen current border restrictions. Read that as to remove the sovereignty of countries, to legislate um, the removal of the sovereignty, uh, of uh, remove the laws of sovereign countries uh, to enforce and legislate um, uh, migration, to force countries to do it regardless of how it affects their economy. Um, and you don't let the citizens of the country decide, you let the United Nations decide. Effectively, that's what he's um, speaking about. A former socialist party, of course, Prime Minister, is in his native Portugal. Guterres took over the top job uh, at the UN January 1st. Um, so Breitbart reports his article titled Migration Can Benefit the World. This is how uh, we at the UN plan to help makes a bold claim that mass mig migration powers economic growth, reduces inequalities, and connects diverse societies. I have no doubt that it reduce reduces inequalities and connects diverse societies, uh, but powers economic growth. I think it probably pulls all countries down to the same level, to the same common denom de denominator, uh, initially at the very uh, least and, uh, and and makes it hard on a lot of economies uh, economies and uh, countries are set up very differently in their laws and their and their uh, economic uh, rule sets and their cultures and to just uh, force uh, migration in them without without limits uh, without uh, the, the, the civilian population uh, voting for these things can cause massive trouble, massive unrest. It's going to cause a security nightmare. And of course, they'll just put in more laws to deal with the security nightmare. And effectively, at, at the end of it, we're living in uh, a complete socialist, non-free, uh, you know, society. But that's where they're moving to. And that's where the Bible says we're going to, a socialist, uh, non-free society where a one-world government controls everything, where a one, one leader, the Antichrist figure, where he controls everything and he controls it by way of our money he has a mark of the beast that he sets up and uh, <clears throat> we will have to take it or be killed effectively uh, Daniel says uh, that we'll take it or we won't be able to buy and sell so it's going to take over all commerce uh, this particular thing and this is the general move this is kind of the first big indication that I've seen the world powers moving to uh, uh, or heading towards the removal of uh, borders uh, of these countries. It goes on, this will be the first overarching international agreement of, of its kind, he boasted, but it cla but claimed it would uh, not place any binding obligations on states. Not now, of course. They'll save that for a little bit later. Uh, once they've normalized people to this idea, then they'll, then they'll put in laws because then the people will uh, be more normalized to it and won't be so against it. 
uh, but rather serve as an unprecedented opportunity for leaders to counter the pernicious myths surrounding migrants. These assurances have failed to convince the Trump uh, administration in the United States, and the White House rejected it as simply not compatible with U.S. sovereignty. See? That's exactly what I'm saying. This is the attempt by world governments, world powers, to remove borders, to remove sovereignty. And the world is heading toward it. I think, I think Trump is removed from power. I think he is a, he is kind of a, not a time pause because he's pushing Bible prophecy ahead in his own way, like with the embassy uh, move to Jerusalem. But on the other hand, it's also a, a bit of a, a pause in, ter in terms of world government and uh, incursion into sovereignty of nations um, by by uh, Trump rejecting this. And I think uh, I think the way it's probably going to go is that Trump is either pushed out. I don't know if he's going to get to the end of his four years. Maybe he is. Uh, but after that comes in a liberal left-leaning government, I think, which says, yeah, bring this on, Guterres. Let's, let's agree with the UN. Let's get rid of our sovereignty. And uh, I think the U.S. citizens and the citizens of any uh, Western country is at that point going to be normalized to it. And we're going to say, yeah, yeah, United Nations, come on in. Let's make everything equal for everybody. And, uh, but I think, uh, boy, trouble is going to come from that. But we know this is what's going to happen in Bible prophecy. Somehow the borders come down. Somehow a world government is set up. Somehow a, one, a single world leader is set up. Somehow we lose our sovereignty. We lose our uh, money. We lo lose our sovereign money, the dollar, the U.S. greenback, um, the pound in Britain. Somehow all these currencies, these fiat currencies, go away. And I think it's going to be uh, in conjunction with a financial collapse. And uh, also probably in conjunction with the UN um, directly uh, saying, you know what? Uh, oh, there's a financial financial collapse, uh, but uh, we have this uh, this uh, mark of the beast system. Uh, they're not going to call it mark of the beast, obviously, because that sounds bad. But we have this new fiat currency system. If everybody moves to this, you're going to be fed. You're you're gonna you're gonna have lots of economic growth in your country, and the whole world's going to take that on and, and, and go ahead with that. Well. Guterres said it was crucial to recognize and reinforce the benefits of migration. Migrants make huge contributions to both their host countries and countries of origin. He made the contentious claim that migrants take jobs that local workers cannot fill. And I think that's part of the problem of local workers. Maybe they don't want to fill the lower paying jobs because they feel like they should make more money. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, lower payer uh, migrants come in and they're, you know, they're happy generally to take the lower paying jobs. And that does take away jobs from the, the few uh, local residents who do, uh, who are happy to take the low paying job. Um, so th there's a huge impact here. And, you know, if you do this in a, in a, in a calculated manner uh, where you take in a certain number each year and they can assimilate and uh, immigrate and get used to the culture and shift things over, shift mindsets, uh, get used to the local laws, etc. That's fine. They, they integrate, they assimilate, everything's good. This is what's been happening in the U.S. and Canada, you know, for 100, 200, whatever years. Um, this is what migrants do. They come, they assimilate, they get used to the cultural uh, situation and the laws. But if you uh, import them or allow them to come on, uh, on a significant uh, in significant numbers, in significant numbers that they don't have to assimilate, they can just stay in, in within their group and keep their own laws, Sharia law, and these sorts of things. Um, you get to a point where they never end up assimilating because they don't have to, because they can always, they don't have to learn English, they don't have to, <clears throat> you know, because they're in, they're within their own, um, you know, Chinatown or, or, or whatever, you, these little uh, groups of people within the bigger cities. And they don't have to learn the local language. They don't have to learn the local college because, uh, culture because they have uh, enough of um, uh, people from their home country uh, or area of the world. Um, and, and there's not anything, anything necessarily wrong with that. But the, the problem is they don't have a chance to assimilate and get used to the culture. So that ends up causing uh, friction within uh, the local culture. Uh, between them, and this is the issue. Um, you, you just can't take in so many at a time. I got nothing wrong with uh, immigration. Um, it absolutely is uh, generally good for uh, the economy, uh, but at, um, at at numbers where uh, society um, can assimilate them, can integrate them, and uh, at at numbers that they're not overwhelming the job scene, taking all the jobs from uh, locals who might otherwise be able to um, get those jobs. So it's it's a big issue. And um, uh, it's what is fascinating to me is that the UN is actually uh, pushing 
uh, ahead with this no more borders plan and this is a direct directly in line with uh, what the Bible says is coming a one world government and a one world leader and you can see the one world government the United Nations uh, and it may not be the United Nations themselves that become the one world government but they are the one world uh, government institution right now that we recognize and they are pushing for a one world government and the removal of sovereign borders and Trump rightly recognizes that and that's why he uh, rejects it uh, uh, down here saying that it is not compatible uh, with US sovereignty in the fourth line up there so I think that's true and I think that's gonna last only as long as uh, Trump is in power and then when the lefty uh, liberal leftists uh, come back in the power and I believe they will because most of the people um, in North America uh, are, are leaning that way they're not conservative anymore it's 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 not cool to be conservative by any stretch anymore and they feel that as a restriction on them um, uh, but it means that when these uh, when Trump is out um, they can move fully over this and uh, fully embrace it so these are significant times that we're living in and you can see how these things are building up and getting very close thanks for watching guys I'll put the link in the description and we'll see you in the next video